Hello and welcome to this environment video where I'll show you how we can create this kind of medieval wall using a combination of 3ds Max and ZBrush. So to get started I'll go ahead and take my reference plane. You can see it, it's not located on, on zero on the y-axis so I'll go ahead and hold shift make a copy of that and I'll right click here and make this zero on the y-axis that way it's a lot easier to work with. So it says zero on X and zero on Y and I'll go ahead and give this my gray material and I'll go into my front viewport, Alt X, make a new edit poly modifier and I'll begin using the swift loop tool to insert these loops. These loops represent the boards, the wooden planks here. So I'll just go ahead and insert two loops through there and now I'll go ahead and insert loops through the top and then right here as well and here and uh, I also want to do this part right here however the swift loop tool will not work so well here so here I'll just do some manual cutting just alt C is the default shortcut and then I'll go ahead and make a cut here and then I'll zoom in just to see what's happening here and you can see whenever you're working with this kind of geometry uh, there's always some rough spots where you're not quite sure what's happening if we take a look at our reference image you can see that the the wood the piece of wood is basically going up here but there's also a little piece right here I'm not quite sure what that's doing there so uh, for the purposes of you know modeling let's go ahead and just simplify it and just go ahead and go from here to here so we have made a decision as an artist just to simplify this this spot and just make it easier for us alright and here I can go ahead and use the cut tool as well You can also use other tools like uh, the slice plane or the quick slice tool. All right, I'll go ahead and make a cut here, and just creating this boards right here and one in here as well. All right, now I'll go ahead and. First of all, I'll go ahead and delete the outer section. I'll do that just by going into border, selecting, and then switching to edge, and then pressing delete. So basically, we don't need that outer edge there. All right, now I want to go ahead and actually isolate all the planks. So there's several ways I can do that. I can select all the planks, or I can select all the areas that are not planks. and I'll go ahead and control I and then I'll go ahead and detach that detach this clone All right. and I'll select those planks alright and I can call this wood this will be the wooden part and um, I can also go ahead and move it out a little bit for now alright now we've got to create these boards in the middle right here I'm also going to go ahead and create a copy of the reference like always just so I can have something to look at that's not being blocked by geometry so there's one two three four five six seven eight and as you can see, you know, this is old architecture, so nothing is quite straight. So if you want to modify them by moving them up and down a little bit, that's fine. Maybe using FFD, maybe using the noise modifier. Those are all good choices just to add some unevenness and various damage. and Not quite damage, but just... When, that, when this architecture was built in the first place, even, the, even when, it, when it was brand new, it still wasn't completely straight, so because of you know primitive building techniques so we want to go ahead and replicate that so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and select this detach and I'll go ahead and isolate these 
Alright, so to get these eight pieces, I'll just go ahead and select an edge here or select both of them and use the connect tool and I'll go ahead and insert seven segments. So because I want eight, I'll insert seven segments. If I insert eight segments, I would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So keep that in mind. Insert less, one less than the total amount you want to have. So if you want to have eight, we get seven segments. All right. Then I'll go ahead and select all of these and inset. So if I inset by group, it will inset all of them together in unison. If I change to by polygon, it will inset them all individually, which is what we want. Just a little bit of inset here. We don't want the gaps here to be too large, just a little bit of air space in between. So maybe just a little bit more. Okay. Control I and delete. There we go. And what I'll do now is I want to make these planks more even, so I'll go ahead and just uh, select all these edges and connect and just make it more even. Because I will be sculpting this, so I want the there to be even topology here. Nice, even quads. All right. And if you look at this, you can see that this right part is a little bit higher than the left part. So to get that effect, I'll just go ahead and select the right one here. I can detach at this point. Detach not as a clone, but I don't want it to be a clone. I want it to be separate. Or I can simply select these polygons and apply the FFD modifier and maybe just kind of move it up a little bit. And maybe first move it down a little bit and then kind of move it up a little bit. So FFD is a great way of adding some nice, you know, a little deformation to these planks. All right, and I can go add a new, another other poly. Maybe select the left planks this time, and also FFD. And don't forget that you can add more detail with the FFD by using FFD box and then you can customize how many points you want. So if I increase the height, I'll get a lot more control points so I can have a lot more room to manipulate the height, for example, and just give it lots of little deformations here. You can also do this in ZBrush using the Move tool and uh, various other tool tools, but I prefer to start start doing this in 3ds Max. All right, let's go ahead and isolate this and just see how it looks like. I think we've got a nice effect going here. Let's go ahead and right click and collapse to just to get rid of all the modifiers. Simplify. Remember that the more modifiers you have, the more resources 3ds Max will be using because. Uh, the, the modifiers can be very complex, you can have a large stack and all the information needs to be saved somewhere so that will be using up your memory and system resources. So you can just go ahead and collapse that and simplify things. Okay, so what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and apply a turbo smooth modifier and I'll give it three iterations and I'll go ahead and apply a show modifier. And this way when I subdivide it in ZBrush it will have plenty of density and it will be all even what you might be tempted to do is you might be tempted to go ahead and insert control loops however what that would do is increase the density to the edges and it'll make some sculpting some parts difficult and it will have too much density on the edges so a better way is to apply turbo smooth in that way or or the Tesla modifier and that way it will have even topology alright so that's that for these planks now let's go ahead and take care of these planks as well. So remember that the shell here is four. So we want we want to go ahead and apply the same roughly the same thickness to the woods to make them uniform and to make them match. So I'll go ahead here and I'll delete the parts that are not actually wood. And since these these pieces of wood are further in, uh, we can actually go ahead and insert something here and insert something here. 
and I can go ahead and delete this and I'll go ahead and select these inner pieces uh, you can see right here when I use the cut tool I didn't cut all the way and so when you're using the cut tool be careful make sure to cut all the way if not just cut some more and then weld so that's just a common problem when using the cut tool and I'll go ahead and uh, detach this not as a clone alright so here is my wood and I can go ahead and before I apply a show modifier I can go ahead and detach these pieces because what's happening here is that if you look at the reference image you can see that this piece of wood for example it's starting here and then stopping right here this piece of wood is starting here and stopping here at the bottom so if you want to match that we'll need to go ahead and first of all select them and detach them and these pieces start here and go all the way to here so I need to go ahead and detach that alright like this If you would like these pieces to have a better name, you can go ahead and select all of them and go under Tools and uh, Rename Objects. So I'll go ahead and call it Wood or yeah, Wood underscore, and then click on Numbered, Rename, and what that will do is now all the pieces will have a name like Wood 02, Wood 03, Wood 06. So now they're nicely named. That's a a great way to quickly name things. All right, so now uh, one thing you can do is you know simplify it and remove these unnecessary pieces. They have served their purpose. We can now remove it. and now that the pieces have been detached we can actually go ahead and reattach all the pieces so I can actually now go and reattach the pieces and now when I apply show modifier they are now all individual pieces so okay so now we're left with all of these wooden pieces and you know one way of fixing them by giving them even topology is by selecting it and then using the connect connect edges tool to insert a bunch of edges here a faster method is first of all I'll go ahead and uh, deselect this area right here it's a little bit of a, a special case we'll fix it individually so I'll go ahead and detach that w what we can do is we can go ahead and apply a modifier called quadify mesh and what this will do is it will attempt to put quads nicely in your mesh so this is before as you can see very long rectangles I'm going to go ahead and activate, quad activate quadify mesh and I'll set it to something like one and you can see we have some it's all triangles but if I apply edit poly I can, go, I can then go under geometry quadrify all and it got rid of all of those triangles and now I can now apply a shell modifier for example and then turbo smooth and now we have pretty nice planks ready to go 
and you can of course always apply tessellate first and now when you subdivide in ZBrush you will have some very neat planks ready to go so definitely give Quadrify Mesh and Geometry Quadrify All a, a try and you'll get some pretty nice results. There will be a few areas that are a little bit iffy but this will be just final resculpting. As you can see all the other results all the other areas are pretty good. And now let's go ahead and take care of this area. Let's try Quadrify Mesh here see if it works. Okay, as you can see, it produces some strange results right here. So we might be better off just doing this manually. There we are. Let's go ahead and apply a show modifier. I'll make it two. All right. Let's take a look at a reference image. All right, it's coming along pretty well. Now what we need to do is actually create this the actual wall. So we got the wood taken care of. We got a wood piece here, here, and here. All right. Now let's take care of the actual wall area, and that's why I have a copy here. So what I can do is I can just go ahead and actually just go ahead and delete all these modifiers and so I actually want to create the wall section so I'll just go ahead and make it simple here so basically I want this to be almost one polygonic so they want to cut away some areas here and here and I'll go ahead and isolate those areas by doing it like this and then cutting right here and I'll go ahead and simply delete these areas like so alright now I just need to go ahead and clean it up a little bit I just want to fix up this end gone here by inserting a loop through here inserting a loop through here just evening things out a little bit and then I can now apply test late for example but we can also do this in ZBrush. So for now I'll go ahead and leave it like this. Alright. Let me go ahead and move this over here a little bit. So it's about closer to the wood. Alright. And now, now what what's also important is I'll go ahead and actually hold shift and make a clone of this right on top. So what a lot of people will do is they will actually try to sculpt this area, sculpt uh, these types of areas using just one plane, one layer. But I think it's a lot easier, a lot smarter as well to have actually two layers of planes and it's also helpful for texturing because you can texture the bottom plane as a separate it's uh, you get it's a lot easier to texture that texture that way because it's a separate object so you can quickly apply a separate material to it and I'll show what I mean once we get to sculpting so oh and one more thing I want to do is of course delete the outer part just activate border mode select it edge and delete alright now we're ready to go now I'm just gonna go ahead and select this and I'll just go ahead and export this to ZBrush as an OBJ and I'll see you in ZBrush